Welcome back to the Lab 207 webcast. My name is Mr. Kite. I'll be your instructor for the day. We're continuing on in our series on energy, just about to wrap up now. I think we've only got two more videos beyond this one, but today we are talking about fermentation. So as always, let's get our objectives and get going. So there are three objectives for the day, and here they are. First one is to recognize the need for the regeneration of NAD+. We talked about NAD+, a lot, so it's probably a big deal. We're going to talk about it some more. Second of all, Compare and contrast alcohol fermentation and lactic acid fermentation. And finally, identify the difference between an obligate anaerobe and a facultative anaerobe. So getting going with just a quick overview of fermentation. So you've kind of got a point of reference. Here's some basic stuff you need to know about it. First of all, this is energy production without oxygen. So there are a lot of single-celled organisms and sometimes in our own bodies that there is a lack of oxygen, still need to be able to make some energy, fermentation is the answer. Glycolysis pairs to fermentation. So in a classic cellular respiration cycle where you've got oxygen present, you go glycolysis, Krebs, electron transport chain. Without oxygen, no Krebs, no electron transport chain. So you have glycolysis and fermentation. Its whole purpose is to regenerate NAD+, and we'll talk more about that in just a second. And there are two types, as I mentioned, there's lactic acid and alcohol fermentation. So let's talk about each one of these points in a little bit more detail. Like I said a moment ago, fermentation is energy production without oxygen. Let's talk about why this has to happen for just a second. If you remember the other day, we talked about the electron transport chain. I'm going to extend my little electron transport chain right here. We've got NADH, it comes in and drops its electron, the electron bounces all the way down the line, all the while pumping up hydrogens that will later flow through that ATP synthase to do some work. The whole force that pulls this electron down the chain is our oxygen. Remember, it's a big old electronegative atom, which means that it likes electrons, so it's going to pull them towards itself. If we don't have that oxygen, then this chain just kind of shuts down. There is no force to pull that electron down the chain, which means we can't pump hydrogens. If we can't pump hydrogens, then we can't produce ATP. So if we're not making ATP through the electron transport chain, our organism needs another route by which it can actually make some ATP. Answer, fermentation. So oddly enough, or at least when I was learning about this, the thing I thought odd is, all right, no oxygen. It must be something to do with electrons or hydrogens or ATP that shuts down. In reality, it's actually the NADH that shuts things down. So as I was talking a second ago, oxygen pulls our electrons down the chain. We've talked a lot about how during glycolysis and Krebs, as the molecules transition through those processes, they give up hydrogens and high energy electrons. Those electrons and hydrogens are picked up by NADH. NADH comes along, he dumps the electrons off. When he dumps an electron off, he becomes NAD plus and he is able to go back and pick up some more electrons and hydrogen. So if we think of this as the taxi, taxi has dropped off its riders, it's now empty, and it's ready to go back. Problem is, if we don't have oxygen pulling these electrons down the chain, our NADH builds up and clogs the system. If you've got a bunch of NADH, you've got a lot of full taxis, but there isn't NAD plus left to pick up our electrons. If there's nothing left to pick up those electrons, then uh, glycolysis and Krebs aren't able to go through all of their intermediate molecules because some of those molecules have to give up an electron and a hydrogen before they can move to the next step. So the whole reason that things shut down in the absence of oxygen is you actually get a buildup of NADH. The job of fermentation is to figure out a way to get more NAD plus so we can at least keep glycolysis running. Two strategies for making this happen. Lactic acid fermentation and alcohol fermentation. So for lactic acid fermentation, we are still putting in glucose. This piece right here is like shorthand representation of glycolysis. So we're still going through glycolysis and then we are getting pyruvate out the other side. So this part is just like it happens aerobically. Here's where things get different. Remember that we need to regenerate NAD+. So in this process of glycolysis, we made two NADH, but glycolysis will not keep running if we don't have these NAD pluses to go back through it. So our pyruvates go through a couple of molecular rearrangements that turn them into a lactate. 
in the process of going through those rearrangements, NADH is turned into NAD+. Now, this is one that you feel every time you exercise. The burn in your muscles is a buildup of lactate. That lactate turns into lactic acid and causes your muscles to burn. So as you're working out, your body's using up all the oxygen. Oxygen is no longer available to the electron transport chain, which means it shuts down. But your body still needs to make some energy. So it's going to produce these two measly little ATPs through lactic acid fermentation. It's not much, but it's better than nothing. The other form of fermentation is alcohol fermentation. Looking at that picture, it looks almost exactly the same, and it is indeed very similar. We've still got glucose going in. We've got the process of glycolysis right here, making a couple of ATPs. We've got some NADHs made. We get our pyruvate out the other end, and that pyruvate is going to go through a couple molecular rearrangements in the process of being arranged. It gives up CO2, comes down to this end of the process, our NADHs are used, and we regenerate NAD+, and we get ethanol. Quickest real-world application of this is the brewing of beer. All right, In producing beer, you use yeast in that process. Yeast are put in an anaerobic environment. Because there's no oxygen, they do this process. The CO2 would be the bubbles in the beer. The ethanol would be the alcoholic content of it. So that would be an example of alcohol fermentation. I like to try to do a quick little recap when we're talking about cellular respiration stuff. So here's big overview. If you don't have oxygen, if you do not have oxygen, you don't have NAD+. Without NAD+, you can't run the Krebs cycle or glycolysis. Glycolysis is paired to fermentation. We are cutting Krebs and electron transport chain out of the equation. So rather than getting ATP from them, we only get a couple of ATPs. And there's either lactic acid fermentation, which gives us lactate, or ethanol fermentation, which gives us CO2 and ethanol. Both of those, the purpose is to regenerate that NAD+, so we can at least keep glycolysis running and get the two ATP out of that. Last quick topic for the day is anaerobes. Anaerobes are going to be organisms that can operate without oxygen around. There are two types, obligate and facultative. An obligate anaerobe is an anaerobic organism that cannot exist in the presence of oxygen. It is obligated to be away from oxygen. So anytime oxygen comes around, it's poisonous to our obligate anaerobe and will kill that organism. Facultative anaerobes have the ability to produce energy in the absence of oxygen or in the presence of oxygen. So they can either do full cellular respiration, glycolysis, Krebs, electron transport chain, or they can carry out fermentation. We fall into the category of a facultative anaerobe because our body prefers to use cellular respiration, but like when you exercise or something and you use up all the oxygen, we can still get a little bit of energy through anaerobic respiration or fermentation, whichever you like to call it. So that's your quick whirlwind tour of fermentation. I hope you found it helpful, and I hope you will join us again on the lab web. Let me try that again. I hope you'll join us again on the Lab 207 webcast. Thank you. Have a good day.